Hello there and welcome to this technical deep dive session coming to you as part of our Avantra Summit focused on helping you go further, faster. My name is Brenton O'Callaghan and I'm the Chief Customer Officer here at Avantra. And from wherever and whenever you're joining us today, I thank you for your time and you're very welcome. I really hope you'll find this session useful. If you want to view more sessions from the Avantra Summit, please do check out our website at avantra.com. And you can also find our other videos on our YouTube channel. Today, I'll be speaking with my good friend and colleague, Avantra's CTO, Bernd Engust, about the innovations coming to your Avantra installation today, but also in the very near future. This month, we saw the release of Avantra 21.11.5, which has brought some really exciting innovations, as well as some ramp ups, which Bernd is going to tell us about in a few minutes. Everything we do here at Avantra is about giving you back time. It's as simple as that. If you or your team are spending hundreds of hours per month on automatable tasks, then that is time not spent on business automation or innovation. And this is what today is all about. So let's get started. Bernd, are you ready? I'm ready. And thanks for the introduction, Brenton. And thanks for having me as always. Always a pleasure to have you here because we get to look at the, the proper, in-depth, real, tangible stuff that our customers are starting to use today. So, so where do you want to start? I know we have a few topics we want to cover. Where do you want to get started? So uh, with 2111, we introduced a new functionality called Hot News. So Hot News mm -hmm. Download and automatic evaluation of this Hot News. And we got some tremendous positive feedback on this functionality. Uh, so yeah, basically, people love it. And they ask for some more features, actually. And we love this feedback because we realize it's really useful and people are using mm -hmm. it. So I would want to give you first an, an update on what we enhanced in the, in the hot news, in the area yep. of hot news, evaluation, and all these kind of things. Um, and then let's dive in to the changes uh, in real detail, technical changes, what we did for the automation engine. Brilliant. Sounds like a great start. So, so why don't you get your screen share set up? And for, for those who may or may not be familiar with our hot news uh, functionality, this was something we introduced uh, a few months ago. And yeah, customers seem to really love it. I know, Bernd, you're getting loads of feedback. I'm getting loads of feedback. Um, but this is about our software automatically interacting with the SAP backbone to give you visibility and also proactive um, notifications about not just the fact that there is the SAP hot news, hey, you know, a new, new, CVE, a new CVE or a new security issue. But we're also going a step further and saying you have a new security issue and it impacts these five systems. And this is where customers are getting really, really excited. Um, but there's more, right, Bernd? All right. So let, let me dive in. So what you've just been saying is here, support SAP hot news, right? So we download these hot news uh, just as a recap uh, automatically. Um, while this, since this feature is available, I've always been looking when I get these mails from, from SAP, uh, has Avanta already been downloading it uh, during night time? I gave up now because it's, you can really rely on it. It's always there, right? Now, the feedback we've got is, can you deal with security notes as well, not only hot news, right? And this is what changed. So what we did here in this integration space, Right, I'm opening this one. You see here the integrations with the SAP Backbone. And now what we changed is enable download of SAP security notes as well. You can simply enable, right? By the way, uh, we enable it per, per default anyway, right? So this is what changed. And you are now you now have the possibilities in the SAP Hot News evaluation, which I changed here once again, to filter on which level of severity do you want to have. Nice. To very so high. This, high is, this is the score assigned by the industry to this security vulnerability as to how good or bad it is. I think uh, we all remember Log4j in, in, in December, and of course that was the CVSS score of 10. Um, but but you know, there, there's so many coming out every, every other week. It's, it's fantastic to be able to filter by this. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, we all hear or have heard from the uh, web dispatcher, so this internet oh, yes. manager vulnerability mm -hmm. lately. You see it here, and again, here see uh, the systems which are um, affected by this vulnerability. We do this all the time, you know, update, downgrade the kernel, mm. uh, just to give, give a little demo here. 
Good. Now, um, especially some customers, some of our customers, they would love to report this to their to their uh, uh, to their customers, especially many service providers, but as well enterprises who want to report this to the chief sec information security officer or, or auditing. Like, That's the other one that keeps coming up as well. How do we know when it was put in, what was put in, and, and all of this yeah. stuff? And we just later returned from DSEC, right? Uh, hmm. DSEC, the German users group, technical technology days in Düsseldorf was uh, two weeks ago. And um, we noticed at the booth how prominent this topic security in the SAP space, space is. So that's ongoing, even I would say getting stronger all the time, right? Yeah. Good. So now let me dive in here. So we've, we've added two more functions, two functionalities ex um, um, concerning hot news. What we did is we added it to the notification management. So you know that um, Avantra, this functionality is in Avantra since the very early days, right? And now you see this action for SAP hot news events. This is something new. So whenever a new SAP hot news comes out and systems are affected, you can do something in, in a generic way, right? Uh, so this is a standard uh, SAP, um, Avanta functionality. So you can then use this massive amount of output channels to do something, for example, to set up an incident in ServiceNow, right? Okay, so uh, let me filter on one of these um, actions here. Hot news are here. Here we see one new hot news, right? And here's what you can configure in this output channel. You can change the priority. You can say trigger on downloaded SAP hot news, or you can say triggered on affected systems by SAP hot news, right? And then you, then you really get a, a notification and you can deal with it. Do, do whatever you want with this notification. Good. And actually, that's a, that's a really good distinction, right, Bernd? Because you may want to know about every piece of hot news that comes out. Or perhaps you really don't want that level of detail. You only want to know when it actually affects one of your systems. Uh, and I know, you know, so, some basis admins, they love to know about all the hot news just so they can know and double check and be aware of it. But others, they don't have that time. So they only want to know when, when it's actually affecting one of their systems. And that's a really nice distinction in this output channel. Correct. Um, so and this is number one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just our customers can now think about what, what they're going to do with these notifications. This is basically real time when it comes out. Um, not that real time, but very important as well. We have added the SAP hot news to the reporting functionality here, to our service level reporting function. Yeah. And, and just and before is, you go there, Bernd, I just want to, just in case anybody does want to see more about this functionality, we've just released a Mastering of Vantra video on this exact topic of sending, how to send these notifications to Slack, as I think is, is, the, is the scenario we used, and how to format them in rich text and, and, and use HTML and all this stuff. So if you do want to check that out, check out our YouTube channel, um, and you'll find it under the Mastering of Vantra playlist. Sorry, Bernd, I interrupted you, but I thought that was good Thanks, to, to, yeah, to bring up. I love your videos, Brent. <laughs> I'm glad somebody <laughs> watches them. <laughs> From time to time. Of uh, good. Now let us dive into this uh, report uh, section here, right? So what's new here, uh, or I can simply open this one, um, generate again, right, is here that we are now, you can now report implemented SAP nodes, and you can report on SAP open SAP head nodes and security nodes. And, and again, you can select which level of severity you, you want to report. By the way, these four categories is, um, is provided by SAP, right? You, so SAP has this distinction very high uh, to low, which corresponds to the, to the CVSS score you, you see right, right here, or CVS score. OK, um, I can Fantastic. such a service that report. Let me do it just like here. And basically the same we had before. And while it does that, Bernd, I'm just going to summarize you know, where we got to here with hot news. So what we've talked about is it's now extended to include SAP security notes, as well as that filtering across the different um, medium high uh, severity um, on the CVSS scores. We've talked about the notification integration. So you can now link it to an output channel and send it basically anywhere when something happens. And now what you're showing us here, which is the service level reports and the integration there for not just the fact that there's hot news, but also for the implemented SAP notes, because that's new as well, right? Exactly. It is the implemented SAP notes. So this is just an overview that, that uh, customers or let's say security departments, auditors can see what, what is implemented on a, on a system and whatnot. 
And really interesting are the open SAP hot notes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Open nice. SAP hot notes security notes, right? And in Avanto, you can, can then go and say, okay, that's not relevant for us. Uh, and then you can make these um, open SAP hot notes and security notes go away, right? Nice. Uh, when they appear here, it's just our algorithm detecting it's valid or it's uh, your system is um, is relevant for your system if you then later on manually uh, figure out oh it's not then you can as well change the status and it's going to disappear here fantastic fantastic this, this way especially a service providers can mm, let's say tell their customers you've got to do something here yeah Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I think customers are really excited about this. And, and a lot of the features that you're seeing here today are from direct feedback from those who are using this feature. Um, you know, people love the feature, but there's, we always want a little bit more, right? And we always want to be able to do a little bit more with it. Um, so this is absolutely fantastic. And thank you very much for showing us this one, Bernd. Um, I'm conscious that, you know, one of the themes of what we're talking about today is going further, faster. It's all about giving you back time. And what I love about this, this whole concept of the hot news is that, you know, we've all been there. It's, it's Patch Tuesday, SAP released 10, 20, 30 notes alongside all the Microsoft notes, all the Adobe notes. And, and you're spending hours, if not days, just reading them going, hey, does this affect me? Is this in my system? Is there something in my landscape that might be vulnerable to this? And and you know, going back to time saved here, if you if that used to take days and it did, and Avantra is doing it all automatically at two a.m. on Wednesday morning, I mean that's a huge amount of time saved, right? Absolutely, right. And this is what we hear. Um, so we lately had a, a really very well. Um, a real life demo with, with one of our NSPs partners uh, demonstrating at, at DSAC and people really late, later came to the booth and say, hey, we, we've watched your, your session. Um, yeah. Can, can, I, can I show me more? Right. Yeah. Show me. How do I get this? How do I save literally days a month uh, on this stuff? So, fantastic. But speaking of time saved, I think quite a lot of our time saving innovations are around that, that bigger topic. Automation. I mean, we're, is, we're always talking about automation, but let's talk about the automation engine because that's where, that's where the real fun is, right? And so, so, so let's switch track and let's talk about that because one of the new things that your team has introduced, which I'm personally very excited about, is the step library. Now, when I heard about this first, I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what it was. But as soon as I figured it out, I became very excited because... You know, if you take some of our for some of our most vocal customers in terms of feedback, and you know, I've been listening to this for two, two, two and a half years, there's been certain feature requests that have been there for a while, input output parameters, reusable code, all of these kind of things around the automation engine. And I think 21.11.5 in particular has made huge strides in this in this space. Um, I, I won't spoil it. T tell me a bit more about mm -hmm. that. Perfect, Brandon. So what we're doing is we are building these high valuable SAP automations, right? Basically, nobody in, this, in the industry or almost nobody in the industry is able to do. This is because our deep integration to SAP, right? For some of these automations, we actually have to write other code to make them happen. Um, and this differentiates us from Ansible or other, other um, platforms, which we they, basically like as well and we're going to of course with mm -hmm. these, right anyway the, the real stuff which goes deeply in, inside sap this, this is uh, what we want to achieve here um, for example if you look at at this system refresh pr procedure this is the most complex um automation we've ever done and i'm, I'm happy to show this uh, a little later in, in life right um you see here these workflow variants um, so, but let me go first to this workflow definition. Here you see the, the inputs mm -hmm. and here you see the workflow steps. And as I said, if oh, we nice. down, this is the, the most complex thing we, we've ever done, right? And, and this is... So, really but ju just, just to make sure I have this right, what you're showing us here is a complete end-to-end -end automation for an SAP system refresh. Is that correct? Correct. From, from a production system to an existing quality assurance system. Right. So, so let, me, let, me, let me put my customer hat on for a second and say, when, mm -hmm. how do I get access to this? <laughs> oh, we are currently ramping up. So we um, are 
uh, as I said, it's the most complex stuff we've, we've mm -hmm. ever did. So we are ramping up with customers, but we already have this run for two customers now um, in real life environments. So it's not only here in the lab, we're currently ramping up with customers and, and the feedback and these minor tweaks we then had to um, do to make it more ro robust, to really make mm -hmm. it uh, work out of the box. Uh, this goes now into our uh, script here. And it, now we're getting really close to the step library I want to explain, right? So you, you see here this workflow inputs, yeah? And a set of these workflow inputs, which can be quite uh, complicated, by, by the way, for a system refresh. It looks mm -hmm. complicated. It's, it is not. It, it's all <laughs> pre-configured. However, you need to bring in your, your own data and, and your, own, um, your own configuration here. And to store such a configuration, we can make, we make these inputs uh, storable here as workflow variants. Yeah, could sound okay. Sim similar to running a program in SAP, you get a variant on that, and so therefore it's a selection of of input variables that are set a specific way for a specific scenario. Is that right? Exactly. And cool. by the way, uh, while we are here, here you see something very nice as well, because these highly complex automations that require different types of users, different mm. kind of users, um, and you see how SAP engineering has solved this. Uh, so to make an automation really independent from, from credentials and users. We've been creating um, a special function to have these users separate from the workflow as well. So one nice. workflow, but several configurations. And then the automation grabs the credential it requires from the SAP system. So you can maintain it uh, um, centrally. And that, that centrally nice. and that's, that's really very cool here. Um, but let us go back to the step library. So what we're doing here for our enterprise customers, we actually deliver the source code of these automations. You can really look behind the scenes what is going on. And one of the most important things when doing an auto, running an automation, a uh, system refresh, sorry, a system refresh, is the system isolation, right? So, um, so the BDLS conversion, uh, people familiar with it, um, I hope some, some basic people are listening to this, uh, they, they know what we are talking about, right? It is here. Oh, <laughs> as you can see, it has a small typo. So BDLS <laughs> conversion. And here it says workflow. And this is something, a whole workflow. And inside this workflow, again, so it's like a hierarchy, we have yep. steps. And, and this is where, I'm, uh, where, I'm, uh, where we'll go now. I will go to so the, you have workflows inside and workflows inside and workflows inside and steps. And, and exactly. so very meta altogether, which is fantastic. BDLS, I simply need to filter here. Oh, uh, no, you have um, to put in the actual typo. <laughs> uh, no, no, I think it's, uh, they, uh, I think it's, it's right here. This, this is... Ah, uh, there we go. Perfect. In, in the name, so it's just copy, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, when we are going to deliver this to our customers, it will be in the Avanta namespace. The Avanta mm -hmm. namespace cannot be changed. But if you would have to adopt something, that's why we're delivering as well as the source code. Then you copy it over to your own namespace and simply do the changes which are required. And Fantastic. Then, uh, it, it's your own. So what we see here is um, such a step. And here you can actually see, again, it looks more complicated than it is. Our original um, code, it's JavaScript, but it uses a lot of functionality, which is built uh, into the agent with our mm -hmm. JavaScript. So we made RFCs, JavaScriptable, and from time to time, it is well called our own up of code in our transport. So there's a tr nice. another transport where uh, a lot of code is in to enable these uh, automations. And now what's really cool here, we had see in these um, step library, these input output parameters. So um, what it is basically, you feed in the input parameters to the whole automation. And then one of these steps can then grab the input parameter, maybe do something, do its job, and let, then later on provide some output and this output can then be used in subsequent steps. And this way you can keep the, let's say, um, you, you can mod modularize your own code. And we nice. It all and reuse it. Um, and make these uh, building blocks much better reusable. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And, and, you know, this is, again, something that customers specifically ask for, because, you know, if you're building, and I, I know one particular customer was speaking to me about this a few weeks ago, they wanted to build... Uh, operating system specific um, update 
uh, workflows. So literally doing doing Windows updates, doing Ubuntu updates or whatever. And there were portions that they wanted to remain the same, no matter which operating system it was. And then there were portions that they wanted to substitute in different logic depending on the operating system. And this was music to their ears because they defined the reusable steps in the step library, they defined the OS specific ones separately, and it was using them across multiple workflows. It was really, really cool. Um, and so I can see why customers are so excited about this. And, and talk to me about how this executes and how, the, how this runs, Bernd. Well, um, so when you run such a, when you start such a report, uh, sorry, such an automation, yeah, you simply press run here, and then you can select from the, uh, from the workflow variants you have created before, mm -hmm. or you yep. can as well decide, okay, I'm, I'm doing now an on the fly here for such complex things. Mm -hmm. I would really suggest you, uh, you create an, um, a variant a variant before, <laughs> and then you simply press yep. one, right? Nice. Um, and now let me simply start this, this automation and see what's going on here. So you, you can actually see it in real life. It will take some time, 20 minutes or so. Sure. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to do something else. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so so that is the refresh from um, production to QA, which is so, sounds fantastic. So we'll let this continue off in the background and you can close this window safely and we can always go back and, uh, and view it. So, so I'm going to move us on because there was a couple of other things we wanted to talk about um, and we don't have an infinite amount of time. Um, you wanted to talk about uh, profile parameters because I think you said there, there was one specific scenario you said was really, really interesting um, to do with profile parameter setting. What was that, Bert? It has to do with security, right? So we see that security, people want to know, is their system set up in a secure way? Is it hardened? Uh, and we, we, we sometimes, we have customers running, being, being responsible for 2,000 SAP systems. Right, right absolutely. And they want to know, is everything configured in, in, a, in the right way? Now, let me give you a very simple example. What we do have here, uh, and this is a bunch of functionality since a lot of, uh, since a lot of time, uh, password policy, for example, here we see the node, Two two five three five four nine uh, SAP security baseline template, very typical and, and basic stuff, right? Um, and with a monitor, you can simply implement this. Uh, for example, here we we've got all these locking parameters being um, checked if they are mm -hmm. have the right value, the to be value. <laughs> And one of the things I love about this, Bert, because I get asked this question a lot, and I know it comes up for you as well, is where does Avantra play in the low code, no code side of things? And this is exactly what we're seeing here. Because of this custom check capability, you're able to, with no coding experience, specify parameters and thresholds and values you want to hit and save it, and that's it. And you get this output, right? Exactly, and we're delivering these things as templates, right? So mm -hmm. you don't have to configure them. Uh, enterprise yep. customers can simply download uh, sets of the security relevant checks and implement on their own and tweak it maybe to their own policies, right? Exactly. Now, what, what we see here is these, do you see all these uh, settings here, lock in, min, password, letters, lowercase, all is setting all to zero and the reference value, the, the actual value is wrong, it's zero, the, the reference value should be one. Um, so we see here, we see the check. This is a bunch of functionality since, since we have a product like uh, I don't know for how many years, um, <laughs> but now we have the automation to fix this, right? Now let me go to um, back to our automations, and here you see the uh, login security profiles. Um, I've just shown you this on a system dev here, so we, we see the system, um, and let us now let us change this. But first, uh, let me let me bring in a sub GUI and log on very quickly to the dev system here. So you will see that, oh, sorry. Uh, that is the wrong password, very secure. That was the wrong password. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can actually see that, that we are not manipulating the file and doing some, some dirty stuff here. We sure. do it the right way by going to the SAP system and using the, the right functionality as if an administrator would do it. So here you see version 15, right? Let us display this version. You see all these settings are here, setting to zero. Yep. Right. Yep. And now I go to the automation. I go back to the automation and change screen. Um, automations. And I will now run this automation login security profiles DSEC. 
So this is to set, so the output of the check we saw earlier said there are problems. This system has some, some insecure parameters based on what SAP recommend. And now you're going to fix it with one click of a workflow. I'm going to fix it right away. And I press execute here. Okay, mm -hmm. here we've got two variants because we're doing this demo. We did it right. in quite back a while. Back and forth, so and back, back and forth. forth right? <laughs> uh, now we want to set it to one, of course. Uh, here you are seeing uh, um, a list of, of parameters we're going to change. Uh, yep. Not all of them, just just to uh, make it make it a little bit easier to to follow. I press run now, and this goes very quickly. So we see the oh fails right away. Um, yeah, this might be because something is not in sync because of our uh, or, or, or perhaps you've locked it because you have it open in your oh, uh, this Sakui. Is the right reason. And by the way, I think this it's actually somewhere. It's actually somewhere in the log. Uh, so it's just in here. Message fail to lock. <laughs> so if you go a little this bit is detail, this is proof I used to be able to log into SAP systems and know what I'm doing. <laughs> so you're you're one of these old guys uh, still knowing RZ10, right? So I think you need right. to go out here. You still see version 15. Yeah, you're going out of the program maintenance completely, and mm -hmm. let us rerun this automation again. Def. Yep. Yeah. Def to one. Def to one. Run. No, I expect something else uh, is going to happen. Hey, hey success. success. It looks like it was successful. Profile default version 16 activated. Right, so let's Fantastic. go to the key system and go to the transaction once again, RZ10. And this is really cool stuff. And now, if we would restart the SAP system, which we can do with auto, uh, Bunto automatically as well, by the yep. way, the check will then automatically go away. And, and you know, so yep. the check, I, I show before, but uh, display uh, profile first and select the profile. Yeah. Or you see version 16. Version 16, lovely. And now they're all set to one. They're all set to one. Fully automatic. Brilliant. No user interaction except pressing the button. And this helps so much to give time to the real uh, experts right now, now these, these rare SAP testing consultants, which have so much work to do for HANA uh, migrations or, uh, I don't know, projects. Anything, but, but there's, there's also another thing. The business. That, exactly, but there's also another thing, Bernd, which is that, and, and again, this is directly from customer feedback. One customer said he was bringing on a more junior resource who he was training. Um, and and you know he wanted to give her the, the ability to execute some of these standard tasks without having to stand over and, and, and show exactly on everything. And the difference here is that once when this check goes red, you know, go and do this execution of this, this workflow and it'll fix the system, verify it all goes green. So that required no involvement from the senior resources and the junior resources were able to start learning and to do some of this stuff themselves that otherwise would have been quite complex. So again, giving back time and that's what this is all about right correct yeah fantastic so people can spend it on valuable work exactly um now we have two more things we want to cover stpi and stapi installation talk to me about that Bert. right yeah so let, let me go back to our automation screen here so by the way let us have a look what the um oh yeah let's check the the status of our the moment so we go to work yeah fusions here it's if running. It's still running here. I nice. assume it's doing now. Uh, it's exporting tables, right? Cool. So that's a typical typical system refresh. Um, yeah. You go from PAD to QAS, but in the QAS system, you would want to keep your users, uh, printers, or I don't know. You, you want sure. to, you want to keep certain data. Um, so the process is that's a typical process. You uh, export them before you do the yep. refresh. By, by restoring, for example, the backup. There, there are several um, methods you, you can use actually for, sure. for the refresh. And then you would import the data you've exported mm -hmm. and saved before again. And, and this then uh, to make sure that, that you keep, for example, special users or I, I don't know, sure. whatever, whatever data you want to keep not, and not <laughs> in place. So this is still running. OK, let us have a look here at um, patch patching, right? Mm -hmm. Again, some, some demos from, from the DSAC. 
Uh, what we can do with the mantra is install, uh, for example, the SAP support tools, as well updates SAP um, spam and saint. This is something yep. we, we did. Uh, <clears throat> what I can do right now is install STA, STA API in the QAS system, right? So let me uh, very quickly here, by the way, you see what, what we've been doing. This, this was an, an update of mm -hmm. the spam. And this uh, here is always a little uh, trouble because uh, we update the spam and, and then uh, uh, it's replaced. But absolutely, we <laughs> can handle this, and we'll simply go go, <clears throat> go over it. Um, good. Let me quickly log on to the QAS system now. So I need to bring this up here. Ah, uh, um, unfortunately, I can't show the automation right now um, because. It's a QoS system, and the QoS system has ah, just been system refresh. Shut down <laughs> by the system refresh, um, as you can see here. So uh, stop. Oh, stop the target system. system. So, Got it. Unfortunately, but um, I think our listeners will will trust us and and uh, and believe us that we've been. It does this. work. It really and then how works. how do customers get their hands on this one? Is this another uh, automation that's coming uh, available to enterprise customers? That's another automation we plan to deliver still in this uh, quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, you see where we are closed. So all these automations will then be available for download for our customers. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the only thing you have to do is uh, tweak or maybe tweak um, the variants we are, we yeah. are delivering. Um, and as I said, if you want to do changes, you need to copy it in your own namespace. It will be delivered yeah. in the Vanta namespace, which is immutable. And so they, they, they can make a copy and they can, they can work in it that way. Exactly. And, you know, and just, just a, a quick note to our customers, you know, if you're looking at this and going, this is really cool, I, I want to get my hands on this, and, and you're interested and willing to spend some time with us on, on some of our ramp up features, you know, please do reach out to your customer success managers, please do reach out to myself or to Bernd, um, and we'll, if, if we can, we'd be more than happy to include you in, in the testing of this, because the more feedback, the better, the more it suits what you're looking for in your environment. Um, the better for everybody. So uh, we've covered a lot here, Bernard. I, I know we're going to recap on, on the system refresh and maybe we'll finish by having a quick look at how far that's gotten in, in, in this session. Um, bearing in mind, it does take a little bit of time to complete. Um, but we talked about the hot news. Um, and so we talked about the extension to SAP security notes, the notification integration and the SLR. Um, integration as well, so you can really start to show customers, show, show the business and show your auditors how things are all set up. Uh, we talked about the step library, which of course is the foundation for what you're seeing here, which is those reusable components of automation and, and how we're delivering steps and also entire workflows um, to our enterprise customers um, sh doing the topics like system refresh and, and, and so much more. Um, we talked about credential management. and We only mentioned that one briefly, but that's a really powerful um, extension of, of the automation engine because you can centrally define those credentials that, let's face it, are different to management and monitoring credentials. They're, you know, they, well, chances are have a lot more permissions. So you can do that separately. And now, Bert, you've just shown us you know, we've kicked off a system refresh. We updated some profile parameters on the fly using using automations, and you've also shown us as well the foundation for the for the spam saint, the STPI, the API updates as well, which is really fantastic. And and, and you've a system refresh running for us exactly as, as we're going here. Have I missed anything, or or is that a fair summary? That's a fair summary. Uh, while you were talking, Brent, I brought up as well mm. um, as. Um, our, our documentation page here. Sure. It's, uh, freely available for uh, not only our customers, it's freely available uh, for, for all. Um, and here you see our, our JavaScript API, and here we added the automation action. So we are using nice. this in our own automations we deliver to our customers. So they get a lot of sample code. They just need to look at how, what is the one to doing here. Um, and, and this shows how you can use this input and output variables in maybe nice. w whatever you're up to. And I know some very, very uh, powerful customers we have outside. And I'm sure they, they're going to make, make use of it and write their own uh, incredible stuff, which we com comes back to you, Brenton, right? User community. Absolutely. 
Exactly. And, and if you have an idea, if you have a workflow, if you have an, uh, something that you've put together, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to share it. We'd love to show it to people because this is how we all help each other in the community and how we can all help each other go, let's face it, further and faster because who, nobody wants to reinvent the wheel. We should be building on, on the success of, of all of us uh, and whatnot. So, Bernd, this has been a fantastic uh, tour of what's new in Avantra 21.11.5. And I know you showed us some dot six features as well. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to seeing those, those automations. You showed us go GA as well and get them into the hands of all of our enterprise customers. Um, and if you have any questions, or if you have any comments or you want to talk to myself and Bernd about anything you've seen here, please do feel free to get in contact. You know where you'll find us. Um, that's, I think that's pretty much it, Bernd. Are we, are we good to close this session out? We are good to close and things will move on and continue because we have 21.11.6 in the making. Exactly. So we're getting close to general available of these features uh, you've just seen here. Fantastic. So much, so much to see and so much more to come. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. And thank you, Bernd, for taking us through those. Uh, see you next time here at the Avantra Summit. Thank you and bye-bye. See you all. Bye-bye.